All right, so here's the second part of the experimental design. Um, this is an experimental design diagram, and when you guys design your own experiment, you're going to want to take a look at this. Um, we're going to go over it in class. Again, this video is mostly set up for people who are absent, um, but it's a good place to start. So there, I will give you guys an experimental design diagram. This is a blank one. Um, this is a filled out one. I know it's typed, but that's the general idea. Uh, and this is a silly experiment, obviously not something real. So what Jim Bob did here is uh, they are interested in um, sea serpents and methane because let's do something dumb. So what they want to do is see if there's a relationship between the amount of sea, uh, the presence of sea serpents and methane. I guess the concept is more sea serpents, more sea serpent farts and more, I don't know. So um, they began by filling this out. So to start doing this, um, and I know it's farther down, you want to sort of think about um, where you're going to go with your variables first. So the first thing they did was they said that there's a number of independent, uh, the independent variable is the number of sea serpents and the dependent variable is how much methane. Okay, so identify those um, first. Then they turn it into a working title relationship between um, presence of sea serpents and aqueous methane levels. Uh, and then they wrote out their three hypotheses. Primary, uh, dissolved methane levels will be significantly higher in areas with me more sea serpents. Notice same language. It's best if you use the same language. Dissolved methane levels will be significantly lower in areas with more sea serpents um, for the alternate. Be careful. So um, this is higher. This went to lower. But if you also change this to lower, you're, um, to less, you're doing the same thing, right? Dissolved methane levels will be significantly lower in areas with less sea serpents is actually the same thing as this one, believe it or not. And then, of course, you're null. There is no relationship between dissolved methane levels and sea serpents, which is what we designed towards. Then they identified their independent variables, how many, um, like how many um, conditions they want to have. So they decided to have three. So um, since their independent variable is a number of sea serpents, they have one that's their con uh, control grouping, which is zero, another grouping with one sea serpent, and another grouping with five. Um, and then how many times are they going to test that? So you can't test things just once. Maybe you just have some one weird farty sea serpent in here, okay? So you can't just set up every um, treatment as what these are actually called once. You need to have your treatments run a minimum, minimum of three times. I'm going to put this in red so you get it. Why three? So for your treatments, you need three replicates. Each treatment, which is where you change your independent variable, gets three replicates. Okay, so why? When we do statistics, at a minimum, we're going to do average, mean, median, mode, standard, deviation, blah, blah, blah. It only works if you have three, mathematically. More is always better, um, but there becomes like a... Re the more replicates you use, the higher the power will be statistically. And I know that doesn't mean anything to you yet, um, but it will eventually. But it's sort of a, a, a thing of diminishing returns. If you do it 10 times, great. If you do it 1,000 times, you're using so much resources, and are you really getting that much better data? Um, there's tests to do to calculate that beforehand, um, but that's outside the scope of this class. So what you may be able to see here is in the, in the control where there's no sea serpents, they only did three replicates. There's no use doing more there because three will just tell you what the baseline is. Um, frequently, when we do studies in the other treatments, we will do more than when we do in the quote-unquote control. And I know we call it a control, which is confusing because then it sounds like a control variable. Nope, this is the controlled treatment, and these are the experimental treatments. Um, just something to keep in mind. Then Jim Bob here went ahead and tried to identify all the other variables um, that they should try to control for. Uh, they should all be fed the same diet, the tank conditions, pH, salinity, blah, 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 should all be the same. They should get the same amount of light and the same type of light each day. And then are your sea serpents coming from the same population? Maybe southern sea serpents produce more methane than northern sea serpents. I don't know what it could be. But those are things you want to try to think about. You guys are going to get this form and it's going to look like this. And you're going to want to fill this out. Notice this, I just wrote hypotheses. You're going to need three there at a minimum. Um, and this we're, we're going to use for your experimental design you're going to propose to do in the next month or so. Um, so hopefully that helped explain this worksheet.